People in disarray on Waterloo Bridge as air raids hit during World War I. A woman's belongings fell to the ground. As she reached for it, and officers pulled her back in time to save her from a car accident. To escape the air raid, the two of them ran into the underground station, where the crowd didn't stop them from talking. Myra was a ballet dancer with a remarkable temperament, and Roy was a British lieutenant of high rank. After a short conversation, they fell in love at first sight. Roy learned that Myra had a performance at the theater tonight, but there's a dinner party he must attend tonight. When the alarm was raised, they had no choice but to end their brief encounter. Before leaving, Myra gives Roy a mascot to bless his safe return. Because Roy is going back to the front tomorrow, he's only on temporary leave. They thought they'd never see each other again. But at night, when Myra was dancing on stage, she found Roy in the theater. Myra can't help but think, did he stand the colonel up to see me? During the curtain call, Myra looks up at Roy and receives a response from his affectionate eyes. After the show, someone sneaks a note to Myra and the madam finds out. She's punished by being made to read out in public what the lieutenant wrote on the note. But madam's ballet company forbids love affairs. So Myra replied with a letter of refusal under the authority of madam. But she had a best friend. She ran out to Roy before he could get too far and told him the truth. And set up a place for Myra to meet him. After a long wait, he met Myra. They had a nice conversation at the restaurant. Roy said he couldn't remember what Myra looked like after. He left her at the station. So he had to go to the theater to meet her. And now he wouldn't forget what she looked like. With romantic dance music and dim can light, they watched the crowd and forgot their troubles and were immersed in happiness. As the last candle went out, they sealed their love with a kiss. At the end of the dance, Roy took Myra home. They looked into each other's eyes and neither of them wanted to leave first. The next day, it was raining heavily outside. Myra was lying in front of the window, thinking of Roy. But when she looked up, she suddenly realized that Roy, who should be at the front line, was standing in the rain. Myra called her friend to find out who it was. She thought Roy had deserted, so she hurriedly got dressed and rushed into the rain to meet him. Hello. Hello. He had 48 hours leave to do a temporary adjustment in the army. Roy wanted Myra to marry him right away. It's a crazy thing to do, but Myra is impressed by his firmness and says yes. The marriage had to be approved by the colonel first, but the colonel couldn't give his approval alone. It had to come from Roy's uncle, the duke. After all, he represents the attitude of the entire family. When his uncle found out that Myra was a dancer, he gave his blessing because he, too, had loved a dancer once. Only she had agreed to marry him. The duke was a kind man. He didn't care about well-matched marriages. With his uncle's approval, Roy immediately buys a ring and flowers and rushes to the church. But they were told by the godfather that by law, the wedding had to take place before 3 p.m. So they made a reservation to come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Back at her place, Myra happily told her friends about her upcoming marriage. Just as they were about to leave for the theater, Myra got a call from Roy. They were supposed to get married tomorrow, but Roy had to go to the front now because of the war. Myra ignores her friends and leaves the theater to see him off. But by the time Myra got to the station, the train had already left. The two of them looked at each other through the window and said their goodbyes. Yesterday they had agreed to get married, but today they were going to be separated from each other. There's no telling when the war will end or when they'll meet again. Maybe this goodbye will be forever. Myra returned to the theater. Madam was angry at her sudden departure. And her friend Kitty, who'd spoken up for her, was fired. But jobs are hard to come by in wartime. Their lives became more and more difficult. But even so, Myra didn't want Roy to know what she was going through. She received bouquets of flowers from him that she refused to exchange for food, even though they would have provided a week's worth of meals. Her pride wouldn't allow her to do that. The letter also mentioned that his mother was coming to meet Myra. While waiting in the cafe, Myra found Roy's name on a newspaper list of the dead. This was the last straw that broke Myra's back. She was so distraught that she was incoherent and on the verge of a breakdown when confronted by Roy's mother. This disappoints the friendly Roy's mother, and she picks up her clothes and leaves. Unable to withstand the shock, Myra fainted. She became very ill. Now her friend, Kitty, is responsible for all her expenses. Kitty chose to become a prostitute to make money and survive. She lied about dancing for a living. But Myra found out the truth. I suppose you think I'm dead. A woman in the midst of war has no choice but to resign herself to her fate. Roy's death shattered Myra's hopes for life. So she joined Kitty as a prostitute. 
She spent her days applying makeup and winking at the men. Myra was standing in the crowd, soliciting clients, when her pupils suddenly shrank. A familiar face was walking towards her. Uh, who had been declared dead, was still alive. Roy jogs up to Myra and swoops her into his arms. But Myra doesn't know what to do. After a short conversation, she learns that Roy's aid card was lost in the battlefield, causing the newspaper to misreport the information. Only his mother knew about Roy's return, but Myra had lost contact with her. Then why did she meet him at the station? Myra was afraid to tell the truth, so she lied that she was waiting for a friend, not wanting to be separated from her again. Roy immediately informed his mother that he was taking Myra home. While Roy is on the phone, Myra wipes her red lips with a handkerchief. But the passing prostitute seemed to remind her of that her red lips can be wiped away, but the fact of her sluttiness cannot be erased. Roy takes Myra back to the manor. Myra was warmly received by her mother. She soon became the center of attention at the ball. Everyone's compliments to Myra made her feel even more guilty. She learned from her conversation with the Duke that this was a prestigious family with the highest honor of the coat of arms. Myra shuddered to think what they would think if they knew she was a whore. She is even more afraid of tarnishing Roy's family name. Roy's mother was also informed of the misreporting and understood Myra's displeasure. Her ladyship hugged Myra and called her her daughter. This made things even more difficult for Myra. After a lot of thinking, she went to Madame's room and told her about her past. Myra should have had plenty of excuses for her behavior, but her pride wouldn't let her. She loved Roy, but her body was no longer pure. Even if Madame would accept Myra, Myra couldn't accept herself. On her way back to her room, she met Roy, who couldn't sleep. He returns the amulet Myra gave him and promises to see her tomorrow. But when tomorrow comes, there is only a farewell letter in Myra's room. Roy immediately finds Myra's house, but she has not returned. A soldier's intuition told him that Myra's friend must know something. But Kitty didn't tell the truth. She took Roy to look for Myra in all the brothels, including the Waterloo train station. Roy already had his answer. At the same time, Myra was standing on the Waterloo Bridge where she first met Roy. Lonely and desperate, she has lost all hope. She still can't get over that hurdle. Watching the passing trucks, the lights shining in her face. Myra's face was expressionless. Her hollow eyes looked straight under the truck. As the brakes squealed, the vehicle came to a screeching halt. Shouts of horror erupted from all around, and everyone swarmed towards the truck from all directions. At the feet of the crowd, only the ivory amulets were scattered on the ground. Years later, he caressed the amulet in his hand and remembered Myra. Roy's hair was now gray, his face was old and his eyes were full of sadness and endless longing. Some might say Myra should have confessed to Roy and tried to get him to understand. Given Roy's love for her, they could have had a happy ending. But it's because she loved Roy so much, she wanted to be perfect for him. But she knew she wasn't perfect. Her impure past had desecrated their sacred and beautiful love. She was afraid that Roy would be disappointed in her and despise her if he knew about her past. So Myra gave her life to Waterloo Bridge and buried her love, her faith, and her soul on the bridge. 